So I was flipping through the religious channels last Sunday morning. Um, something I like to do and I want to raise my blood pressure a little bit. When uh, I caught the tail end of this Christian church service and uh, the pastor was fixing to close the sermon in prayer, of course, and uh, I couldn't help but laugh when uh, the pastor opens his prayer with, Dear loving and attentive Jesus. Huh. Now let's pretend there is a God for a moment here, and uh, as many deluded and brainwashed people choose to do, and let's take a look at what this really implies. So yeah, yep, he's just a loving and attentive up there in heaven, lovingly blessing us with infectious disease and birth defects. He's very attentive, you know, when it comes to giving us natural disasters and giving perfectly loving and healthy parents mentally or physically handicapped babies, you know. Stuff they had absolutely no control over whatsoever. And I love how people call it a miracle of birth when the baby's born normal for all intents and purposes, but what about when God's love and attentiveness gives you something like this? What happened with air? Did he just perform half a miracle, or did he just add too much miracle to the mixture, or they just not give a shit? Oh, and I know what some of you are going to say. Um, this isn't heaven, and the Bible even says there will be suffering, and oh, let's not forget the best cop out of them all. This is his way of testing us, testing our strength and faith, trial by fire, and all that other nonsense. Well, what a God you worship. And what a terrible and disgusting way of testing our devotion to him. You know, if I had a son or daughter, I probably wouldn't test their love and devotion to me by kicking them in the fucking face every morning when they wake up, just to see if they still really care about me at the end of the day, when they're on their knees on the ground bleeding from their nose. You know, if the same thing were occurring in any other situation, you'd probably have pity on the fool who continues to return to their abuser, desperately holding on to the notion he still loves them. It's like eating wife syndrome in that respect. Of course, I don't believe any of this. I just like to place myself in the Christian shoes every now and then to give insight into what you'd actually have to believe if you really believed in the Judeo-Christian God. Don't you think it's time we grow up and stop trying to make excuses for an ancient, outdated, synthetic, and insanely flawed attempt to explain the unexplainable? And don't you think it's time to stop beating our heads with the Bible and trying to understand and love a God that endorsed racism, bigotry, homophobia, violence, sexism, slavery, and everything else we humans like to think we've overcome by now? Well, I do. Let's stop embarrassing ourselves by worshipping an evil, jealous, self-absorbed figment of our imagination who demands to be bowed down to and honored on a day-to-day -day basis, giving nothing in return but more and more evidence that refutes his very existence. I think this God has long overstayed his welcome.